hello folks, here we are again. We're going to have a look at a, a word in the New Testament, just a little short study. This is not an exhaustive study, it doesn't cover every word, uh, or the, everywhere this word's found. We're just going to look at a couple uh, verses and see how it applies to us today. It's an interesting, uh, an interesting word. Let's just have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we just thank you, Lord, for this time for us to look into your word. And Lord, just to look at even one word. And uh, Lord, we just thank you that it's important for us to do this, and each word is important. And we thank you now in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Hope you're all doing well today, and uh, let's get going here. We're going to look at the word peace, and just a, a couple things about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know today that if you uh, go downtown, you walk around, you go to the mall or whatever, you see people that, it seems like people need peace. They seem to be distressed and they just seem to be in a hurry. There just seems to be problems all around. Let's have a look at how this word is used a couple different times in the Bible. We've been looking in John chapter 20 and going through there, we're going through the Gospels. Um, we're at the end of it and when the Lord Jesus has appeared to the, um, the disciples in the, uh, in the, in the end of uh, uh, John chapter 20, and he gives him some instructions and such. And he says, uh, um, may peace be upon you. He says it two times to them. I want to look at that word right there. He says it to them. First of all, they were afraid for the um, uh, uh, Jews. They were locked in there. They were afraid because they were going to be under persecution or whatever. And the Lord Jesus comes upon the scene and says, peace be unto you. Now that peace is to calm their hearts for the fear that they had for... Um, for, you know, afraid of man. And so he says that to them. Now the word he uses there, that word peace, and look at the definition of that, not our English definition, which could be correct anyways, but um, we'd like to go back to the language that the Spirit of God would have used or as they originally um, gave, the, as he originally gave the scriptures, and that would be the Greek language. This is a very fascinating study. Um, the word peace as it's used right there in John 20, two times verse 19 and verse 21, uh, has the idea of harmonious relations with man, okay? Harmonious relations with those that you are fearing. Don't be afraid of them. I want you to not have that. And he gives us that, that uh, peace. And in verse 21, he mentions it again as he's going to send them out. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, he says that um, peace be unto you. Now, in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, we read, uh, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The word peace right there is exactly the same word as we have right here in John 20. Now, I can't really pronounce it correctly. For, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. Uh, it's spelled E-I-R-E-N-E, -E, and it looks like it sounds like Irene. I wondered if that was where we get our English word of the, for the name Irene, which means peace. It looks like that. It sounds like that to me anyways. I'm going to call it Irene. Okay, E-I-R-E-N-E, -E, that peace. So the Lord says in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace harmonious relationships between men. Now, this is the will of God. This is what God wants for mankind. But, of course, we have exactly the opposite of that, that paganism has kind of taken over everything, and, and Christianity is uh, um, kind of slowing down, if I could say it that way. That's the way the world's going. They're going away from God instead of towards God. God wants that peace, harmonious relationships. We see nothing but strife and wars and all that. I suppose in places it's... Things are just fine. You tell me where that is. I'm not sure. Uh, we see back in the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ and some names. I think there's five names there. Um, <clears throat> he shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And it's interesting to note. Now, I use, um, I have a, um, a, a Greek English uh, Bible I use, and I use uh, uh, Vines and uh, uh, Reinecker and Rogers and different ones for the uh, definitions of the words and such. And for the Old Testament, I use Wilson, so go to him. So if you can decipher the the uh, the words by knowing the alphabet and such, you can you can look these up. But uh, Mr. Wilson says, <clears throat> excuse me again, uh, that in Isaiah 9:6, the Prince of Peace, that word peace right there. Now I remember. 
I mentioned that for the in the New Testament, the word peace here in John 20, the Lord says to his disciples, peace be unto you. And the definition is harmonious relationships with men or with mankind, with, with others, okay? In uh, Isaiah 9, 6, that word peace is, uh, has the idea of being in friendship with anyone. Isn't that something? In friendship with anyone. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, he brings peace. He's going to bring peace. He is peace. You'll find that peace when you believe in him, when you trust in him. The Savior, the Son of God who died on the cross of Calvary, paying for my sins and your sins and everybody's. And he rose from the dead on the third day. And if you would trust in him, you will have that peace with God. And the peace of God is yours to have it as well. But in friendship with anyone. Now just keep those things in mind, those definitions. Harmonious relations in friendship with anyone. <clears throat> Another word that's used, I just wanted to mention that in Mark chapter 4, verse 39, um, the Lord Jesus was in the boat and the disciples, they're going across the Sea of Galilee and it was a storm that came up, remember? And so Jesus stands up and he says, peace be still. And there was a quietness and a calmness and the storm was gone, okay? Now that peace be still, it means, uh, the peace means to be silent, it's a different word than the one we're looking at here in John chapter 20, verses 19 21. It means be silent and still means to be muzzled. Okay, just a different word at all, entirely rather. And just a little side note on that. It's interesting to note as the Lord Jesus Christ rebukes the storm and tells it to be silent and to be muzzled, the same words he used when casting out a, a, a devil out of an individual. From that, we can deduce that this storm was demonic. And it was not sent by God. Okay, you say, well, how do you know that? Well, you just stop and think about it. Within the, within the uh, Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there's absolute unity and harmony. And the Lord Jesus is not going to rebuke something in such a harsh way. Anything that the Father does, he's not going to rebuke it. Okay, so we can deduce from that that this is a demonic storm. But I just wanted to show you the difference in the words there. It's entirely, um, entirely a, a different word. We have that word Irene used in uh, John 20 verses 19, 21, Luke chapter 2 verse 14 on earth uh, um, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Um, we have the, basically the same word in Isaiah 9, 6, referring to one of the names of the Lord Jesus, the Prince of of peace. We have a, uh, a, an interesting verse for us in Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 about the Lord Jesus Christ and having made peace through the blood of his cross. That word peace again is that Irene. It's that um, harmonious relations. That It has the same root word as this that we've been talking about. So let's just have a look at a um, uh, application for us as we consider this. Now in John chapter 20 verse 21 the Lord says the second times peace unto you and then he says as the Father has sent me so send I you. So he's sending them going to send them out. Okay, He's going to send them out to do his work which is get the gospel out to the whole world. Okay, And that peace, harmonious relationships. Okay, Now remember that. Remember that. Um, and the Old Testament one in friendship with people, okay? So this word that's used here, it describes that harmonious relationships between individuals, among men, among themselves, among the disciples, and then among the uh, ones of the world. Go to them as a friend, treat them as, as such. And even the ones that you are fearing right now, you've got the wrong attitude. The peace of God will take that away from you. But note the Lord uses that word to calm them down or he wants them to have that peace to calm them because they had the fear of the Jews and then to calm them in order that they would go out into the world okay now are they the only ones that are supposed we're supposed to take the gospel out all Christians are supposed to do that okay it applies to us today and we must have the peace of God and Jesus wants us to have that peace he wants them to go to the Jews who are persecuting them and go to the Gentiles as well. 
He says, as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. And you can take that today for yourself personally, and you should take it personally if you're a born-again Christian. It's one of your uh, duties. It's one of the things that we do. It's the things that we want to do. The peace of God in your heart is absolutely necessary in order to minister to others. You say, well, what can I do for God? What, what did the Lord have me to do? First of all, be at peace. Don't forget the definition, harmonious relationships, okay? You must see others as the Lord sees them, as ones who, for whom Christ has died. Remember, the Lord um, uh, died for the whole world, not just you, not just me, the whole world. And he wants you to approach them with that attitude. The peace of God will help you get over your pet peeves. It'll help you get over your grudges. It'll help you in order for the, the Spirit of God to use you in the spread of the gospel. We have a little sign up, a little poster thingy in the hallway, and it says that um, you may be the only Bible some people ever read. I mean, they'll watch your actions, your attitudes, and your words. And if you have bad attitudes or a grudge or whatever, or you're not at peace, you don't have that quietness within yourself, you're not going to be very effective. In fact, the Spirit of God just he, he can't do that. This is an absolute must. You can't serve God with an angry, troubled, disliking, hateful, whatever else kind of a spirit. Peace unto you. Anything else, anything other than that, anything short of that, short circuits the fellowship of the Spirit of God. He can't do His work. He won't do His work. And we note, as the Lord said unto the disciples, Peace be unto you. We note that is the second person, plural, you, all of you, everybody. That's to them, that's to me, that's to you, that's to every Christian now. Just consider that. Harmonious relations with men. In friendship with anyone. That's our Savior, the Prince of Peace. He wants us to have that peace and live in that. Just a short little message for you. Just a, just a word. The Bible says in Matthew 4, 4. I should have mentioned this at the beginning. But you already know the, the uh, verse. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word is important. So we look at the words, and we look at the definitions, and we see how they apply to ourselves. Thank you for watching. Thank you for looking in. Thank you for being here. Lord bless you. Bye now.